when it gets hard, you feel that point where you just want to go, nah, fuck this. You have to stay with it. As soon as you hit that pain, when you're like, this is hell, stay with it, stay with it, don't break your form. It pays off to get used to that feeling. Money. We want to make this as hard as possible on your tries, so they should be burning the whole fucking time. Like, that feeling is not fun. But it also is, because that's what we want. It's a very special time. It's arm day. What's going on guys, it's Zach Perna here, and I have a mustache. At some point, every man in his bodybuilding journey will aspire to be like Sebum and believe that if he gets a mustache, he will also win Mr. Olympia. So, is it a correlation? Absolutely. Is it definite? Maybe not. So, lately my diet has been like, pretty much a maintenance slash bulking diet. I don't want to bulk too much to the point where I get fat and then I feel like I have to cut again because I have to stay relatively in shape with my job, I guess. I can't really post content if I just look gross. So uh, even if I feel like I look gross, this is not helpful. So my goal now is to build muscle, but not get too fat. So if you are bulking and your goal is muscle gain, you do have to get comfortable with a little bit of body fat gain. You have to get comfortable with not being shredded, with feeling like you're a little bit uh, chonky, I guess, but that's fine. You just have to kind of find ways to get used to that. like not weighing yourself every single day or not relying on the mirror too much and freaking yourself out and doing ab checks every second. You kind of just got to go with how you feel in the gym, gauge your progress, gauge how you feel, and hopefully you don't get too fat as well. My daily calorie intake would be probably no more than 2,800, I'd say. So for some people, that's like a diet, but for me, it's enough to get really, really good sessions in and recover well, and then also not get too fat in the process. So that's kind of what it's all about. It's like a slower bulk. So let's talk meal one. Grass-fed beef. I'm always having this in the house now. It's the easiest way for me to get my protein in. So I have that. I might make some patties. Uh, and I usually have that with rice of some kind. So I made this rice last night and oh my God, this is heaven. Look at this. So this is a like a chicken bake dish. So the rice has currants in it, dates. I think it's like a Persian thing. It's insane. I can put this in a video if you guys want to know how to make it. So I'm going to have that with some beef burgers, and that would be a big pre-workout meal. Honestly, it's like a bulking hack right here. If you struggle to get your carbs in, put a shitload of dates and sultanas into your rice. Whew. Around 250 to 300 grams of rice, because this is my first meal. Mmm, sweet, yet spicy. Cooked dates are just fucking awesome. And we also have some vitamins here. Vitamin B complex, uh, fish oils, and a multi. Also, I can like deep throat 14 pills at once. It's a really uh, strange and unrewarding skill, but I can do it. This is only four though, so it's easy. Heaven. All right, next, pre-workout time. Voodoo Blackberry, this is the best flavor. And the workouts from this, are just great. So, little hack, if you guys want to get like literally the juiciest pump ever to make people even question what is under the skin. Uh, the pump, it feels fantastic. It feels like somebody's blowing ear into it. The citrulline in this will do a good job. Two scoops is ideal. Then pair it with some carbs, quick sugars before the session. So I'm gonna actually pack a few dates with me. Incredibly dense with carbohydrates. So. If you want, I think one date has like 20 grams of carbs, which is pretty insane. You smash down like three of those, 60 grams of carbs already. So that's like having 300 grams of sweet potato or you have like three dates. And also hydration. And by that, I mean salt and water. If you just have water, okay, but the more water you have, the less sodium you're gonna have in your body anyway. And the more sodium, the more you need to drink because they kind of work together. So in very simple terms, that's why if you want to hydrate, you need to have electrolytes as well. You need to have sodium. So if you want to get a really good muscle pump, you need a lot of water, which is what we're having here, and you also need salt. So provided you don't have high blood pressure, this is phenomenal. Bit of water. Smack it down, full whack. Ooh. It's a very special time. It's on. Hey. So with this, we also want to get a full pause on each transition. So, pause at the bottom, pause at the top, slow down. We've got about six to eight reps. Let's keep going heavier. All right, this is working set here. Heavy for six to eight. Reason being is we're not swinging it. We're not getting momentum and going like, like that and just yanking it. 
every rep is purposeful and basically makes it as hard as possible on the arms. So cables as well, nice way to warm into it. I like it. Joints feel good. See, we're not wasting that negative. When it gets hard, you feel that point where you just want to go, nah, fuck this. You have to stay with it. As soon as you hit that pain, when you're like, this is hell, stay with it, stay with it, don't break your form. It pays off. To get used to that feeling, money. Ah. Woo. Keep your arm like that, as opposed to this. To relax the grip, yeah. Yeah, 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 because then it'll be less, less forearm, and it'll just smash the buys there. Yeah, it looks sick. Now play around with keeping your elbow forward as it is. Yeah, so you curl up. And now keep your elbow there. Now stretch down. Yeah. <laughs> so moving into triceps, we'll do one and one. So one by, one try. This can be done wrong a lot. The way I like to do it is my elbows are gonna stay quite far back. Then I'll press forward but then I'll keep them back again. So like see how I'll do a regular press like that, squeeze the hell out of the tries, but then elbows come back and also quite tight in. So it's a bit of a two-way movement. It comes forward and squeeze, tight back. That way it loads the hell out of the try and it actually lets that initiate the movement instead of like momentum or chest. So they come back, squeeze. If you're doing this and it doesn't hurt like shit, you're doing it wrong. So we're gonna load this up, six to eight reps, same kind of deal, make it hurt. Prove a point, like my arms then, fully dead, couldn't get another rep. Whereas most people, if they wanted to do this, they could just go like that. So if I can keep doing these, when I know my triceps are dead, it just shows that there's something wrong with the form, or it could be better in that case. So keeping the form quite strict and regular the whole time, consistent, will mean you'll know when you're fully fatigued as opposed to just doing reps for the sake of it and just moving the weight. It's not what we're doing here, we're just trying to hurt this as much as possible. I always opt for a dumbbell pressure instead of a bar, strictly because you don't need that restriction on your grip. So a dumbbell, you can just have a loose grip in however you like to whatever angle you want really. And uh, if you have a machine, also do that too. Machines are great for this exercise, but dumbbell just fine. Pause at the bottom, grip slightly relaxed, just like before. It's not this, it's just actually like that. Curl up, pause, slow down, pause again. So let's make it even harder and shrink down and get your whole tricep on the pad. Yeah. Pause. Yeah, good. Crushes. With this, you can do them on the cables or bar. Um, I don't mind a bar, and when you're doing this, you don't really need to come down to a certain point. You can, some people can come down to their nose, some people forehead, some people above the head. It's honestly whatever feels comfortable for you. A few things I like to do is I like to try and keep my elbows quite in and tight, and as long as I'm controlling the, the weight the whole way through and not using momentum, it feels very comfortable and safe for me. So I just come down to there, just the forehead, pause, squeeze out. Last exercise, we're doing a superset. Supersetting uh, dumbbell curls with bench dips. However you want to do these, if you want to do them alternating, you can, that's fine. Um, I'm just going to have palms up the whole time. It just, it just burns, there's no break on the biceps. Now this is a different one. Either you get it or you don't. So if you don't get it, don't worry about it. But just take a few steps forward. And now you're gonna actively put the tension on your triceps and flare your elbows, pause, and squeeze up with your arms. 
Don't just push yourself up. Squeeze your triceps. Pretend like you're doing a push down. And then take the weight with your tries on the way down. Oh, the pain. Fuck. Ah, that's cooked. When you get people doing this exercise, if they just do this, it's, it's just momentum and swinging. There's no point. We want to make this as hard as possible on your tries, so they should be burning the whole fucking time. Like, that feeling is not fun. But it also is, because that's what we want. How'd it go? Fuck. <laughs> The focus then was on the execution as best as I could. That's why I only need like three exercises, each muscle, and then I'm done. Uh, and last time I did this exact workout, it was a week ago in Brisbane, stupid pump, and then I literally couldn't extend my arm the next day. Like I was walking around like a T-Rex like this. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, with your T-Rex arms, just, just subscribe and like it as well, that'd be great. Uh, and then, yeah, we will see you in the next video. You guys know what to do. Same night. See your DMs in the PM and the AM Then I slide into your feelings when you see just what I'm saying